Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until Mom got him a job at the cannery. There's a boat up here? They suspended a boat and that's part of his room? That's insane. Look how high up we are. This part of the building is terrifying. Look, like, I would never want to be up here. Oh my god. I'm not cool with heights, generally. <laughs> but mostly, like, this type of precarious, like, I'm on a busted up thing in the sky is just such a bad idea. And don't even tell me otherwise, because characters in this game have already died from falling. Look at that. Got black light stuff going on in there. Oh my god, they had chairs up here? Screw that. <laughs> no, I'm never using that chair. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. San Juan Ale. Oh. It's the pot smell. That's what you're talking about. So he's got a lot of... He's got black lights set up. He's got a lot of, like, color tripping stuff. It's all video games, mind-altering substances, and all forms of escapism, basically. Just locked himself up here. He was so proud of being Indian. I think for him, it was a way to be something other than just a finch. Yeah, these are all very personalized rooms. Is that supposed to be a Super Nintendo, I wonder? Oh, um, that's... Not well. It's almost like Super Super Nintendo controllers jammed into something that looks more, even a little PlayStation-y. No, I mean it's a it's a made up it's a made up console. It's inspired by like ten different consoles, I'm sure. Yeah, you can see the. It's got a PlayStation shape to it, a lot of it, and it's got PlayStation memory cards and PlayStation inputs. But then it has like Super Nintendo-ish controllers, and it's the top-loaded cartridge game. What a weird setup, yeah. Memory cards. Yeah, I remember that visual. Having a stack of random memory cards sorted to the sides because you had to swap them out because they were so small. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. And then he died the last time. I'm sorry, was that crass? Whoa! I'm sorry, when did he die? Oh, 2010, okay. I'm used to everyone being so from so long ago, I'm like, that's a new looking screen compared to that video game console. It's a nice flat screen where this looks like it's not from that same decade as that. <laughs> Got a yoga ball, which he used. So he used a yoga ball as computer instead of a chair. Got some discs here. Trust me. He has two copies of Trust Me, which is weird. The Red King's Dream. Oliver Twist, so I think they're supposed to be mostly movies. The Trial. I always find it weird when there's multiple copies of the same stuff, because I'm like, they couldn't make a few more labels for movies? It looks like, oh yeah, it's, this, it's uh, that, that copy of Trust Me is the last thing in the series of, uh, of this, in the series of movies, and then the same series of movies repeats. Like, it's one thing twice. Interesting. That's the, that, that, that's, I, I find that stuff amusing, because it's, uh, these games are all about attention to detail, like these ex environmental exploration ones. But, so it's like a catch-22, right? Like, that means you gotta make a ton of details, but so they always, those are, they're always gonna cut corners somewhere because these ex environmental exploration games are almost always indie projects. So they have limited resources, yet need infinite resources. So they always cut corners and copy-paste certain things, which, like, at one point, like, oh yeah, no one's gonna notice that, but it's a game about looking at everything, which means you're going to look at it. So it's like, it's this weird, almost contradiction thing that that pops up as a result. It's the type of stuff that you wouldn't notice in another game, but you do in this one. 
It's like a doll with like a scarf. What am I looking at exactly? He almost looks like a bloated version of the Journey characters. Oh, that one's narrower. Is that another game I don't recognize? Or maybe some kind of reference? Or maybe it's just... I mean, he liked... He probably liked the D&D stuff, as far as we could tell. Oh, yeah. Gaming keyboard. <laughs> WASD, you're highlighted. Oh, yeah. It, these are... These are dolls from some kind of fantasy universe that probably isn't a reference to anything, but just something made up for the game. Ooh. The uh, CDs actually reflect the books and stuff. They're actually functioning functioning reflections. Oh, yeah. Neat, neat detail there. Dear Mrs. Finch, As Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... wander. Oh, I'm playing as you with WASD now. Oh no, I'm gonna, am I gonna cut his hand off while distracting? I asked him to describe it. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats. And toes. And this things that have not names. This is taking all of my concentration. <laughs> Oh my god. He knew it was all in his head. Okay, that's tripping me out now. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. Now I'm playing like an isometric RPG. <laughs> Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. I'm gonna cut my hand off. Uh -huh. so let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. This is one of the most, like, systematically unnerving mechanics I've seen in a game, I think. He told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. And songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. He was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. 
but his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. <laughs> Mario! <laughs> we had our Mario moment. I begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. We are really feeling the screen with distractions, distractions now. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. What, does he just keep conquering more and more cities over and over again? Just wants to be the leader of every city? St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis, until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. <laughs> Minneapolis. Lewis. His mother pleaded with him. Part of Lewis kept sailing on. He just es he just escaped purely into his own head. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a. Okay. We're making a choice here. Handsome queen. Is the implication we're choosing a sexuality here or something? The queen was on her own quest for... Sinister serpents. This is taking the most bizarre turn. Look at the amazing visual, by the way, of this, like, this paper craft place is amazing. Electric sitar? Can you even have one of those? I guess you can, sure. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. I can't see where the saw is anymore. Oh no. The blade is invisible. He knew the world was all in his imagination. Oh, there's so many of them now. There's so many of them now. Get off my screen, fish. He was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. Uh... Did I escape? Oh, so you, do you not chop your hand off? Because that was giving me anxiety. Like so that was really uncomfortable. Really, also about as uncomfortable as it is that this entire place just has blood soaked into the grout across the entire floor. 
Ah. Uh, LP Brown Cannery. This is uncomfortable. There's my trip locker. Where do I get the black light to make this look right, though? In here. Where are you hiding it? I got- oh, I got my video games in here, even. Got my pipe. Chinese food, apparently, which I put in my locker. Gross. Gross. Began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. That is a trip. So those fish are alive right now, aren't they? Getting dumped into the into this uh, river. That's from them getting caught, I assume. They get caught, they get dumped in here, they get dumped back in the water. And they come back later to get diced up and put on that. This whole thing's unnerving. Oh man. Are we Edith right now? Nope, we're the prince. Look at that. You can tell from our, our shadow. So we're still the prince. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Is it himself? He's just looping. Just mindlessly looping forever. All the fish just pile up endlessly. There's so many piled up that they're not even going anywhere anymore. This is like a this is like a dishonored looking level. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. That's his dolls. That's what the dolls look like. Is he gonna kill himself to enter his fantasy world? This escape to fantasy seems to have infected this entire generation of... of... the kids here. Because Edith is experiencing this, apparently. Insisted on advising them. The wise calico, the the the. the <laughs> it's huge. Trico. They named it Molly. Queen waited, holding his crown. There was only one thing left to do. Am I gonna turn around? The blade's gonna be there. Oh no! No! Ah, uh, and everything's fish themed in here. Lewis. All right. And the rest, I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. Only one remains. The rem what remains of Edith Finch? Where in the world do we go from here? That was massively more extravagant than anything I expected. This game's a trip. Tragic, horrible, brutal trip. 
Look at that cityscape. Not cityscape. That, <laughs> look at that horizon. This is funeral. My mom told me to start packing. That was their plan to leave. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. Oh. So we were gonna we were gonna go ahead and leave without telling Edie we were leaving after both of the brothers were gone. Even the vein is there, huh? Yeah. So then we pack up and leave, then tell Edie. And what if is that how Edie died? Did she react to us leaving? I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. Is this where I was staying or where she was staying? Because we haven't found Dawn's new bedroom yet, have we? We only found the one from when she was a kid, but she presumably stayed in this tower as an adult with her children. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. Happy 90th birthday for Edie. I would bet this is the mom's room? Yep. Sanjay Kumar, disaster relief. Even that, huh? There's her books. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending. By paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown, give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, your Lord. Amen. So even Sanjay's... Yeah, his ID, his uniform, everything got left behind. So this was her room. Wasn't a lot to it, necessarily. A bed, clothes, a light. Maybe a privacy curtain? I don't think it even closed, actually. I think it was just some stuff to put up to suggest that it's a room, basically. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Did they, they must have fought. Maybe it should have come sooner. Streamers made of paper? Newspaper. Oh. That's distressing. So it's the same pattern as the kite that, that uh, one of the kids died with. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Oh, goody. This part's not news to her. It's what she knew about. There's little toys here. There's the doll. There's the uh, little figures that were in the garden. It's like a globe that's just supposed to project letters everywhere. All oh, the lights are somehow still on after all this time. Backpack. Tons of books. Papercraft. Whoa, a papercraft house of this house. Details there. The little, the little fictional people from the other guy's fantasy. The stag. The seal and the shark. The frog, the stag. The boat. All these details. So she, all the ones she latched onto along the way. Norwegian folk, folk tales. Even a tentacle monster, really. There's the king, unfinished swan. So many little details. That whole last day. Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, 
to our final night together. And all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific- I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last- I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. Is this going to cause her death? Uh, Edith is excused. And it's very dark. The living room? Yep, just as we've seen it. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom set up the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. So we finally get to see what's in this first sealed room we ever saw. Can I even fit in there past all these books? Book of Sand, the Aleph, Labyrinths. A lot of folk tales. That thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning, okay? Names of family members, other details. So that was the nursing home we'd heard about at the beginning, the idea of putting her in a nursing home. Which, has she been staying in here? It seems that Edith may, Edie may have been staying in this, this library. There's a candle, a plate, flashlight. Old photos. History of the Finches by Edie Finch. So it looks like I find the story regardless, even if she tries to hide it. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. This game has done a... I never thought I'd go back to it. This game's done an excellent job at setting up stuff visually that it's going to come up later, even this. Somehow, yes, we're even getting to cross the ocean. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. I got turned around. This is super dangerous from the wa when the water rushes back in. For a while, I wandered. I started seeing things. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. When I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, 
a lot of things came back to me. Are these all household details? Oh, these are all from the destroyed house, aren't they? From Odin. Or maybe I came back to them. Stayed locked all these years. I can't explain, but that I need you to try and- Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it, let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. How did she even find that? I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the van came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. Naturally, I'm in control of this, too. <laughs> Two years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. <coughs> she got better for a while. And then she didn't. And then I was alone. last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you. And tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now... Things didn't work out that way. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. One of the lead guys had a family member died during the production? Or four years ago. I think that's after Unfinished Swan. Was this, all, was this part of processing that? We had baby photos of the cast. So Edith died too. At some unknown time. We were playing as her because she was pregnant in first person. We weren't playing as the kid. But it was all him reading it, of course. Same framing devices that happened before. Just like how we experience other characters in first person, we were experiencing Edith in first person via her diary. 
Don't think we know what happened to her. But if she seemed to somehow know her death was coming. Not sure what to think of that. Either she... Maybe there was some sort of complication in, in, in childbirth and she knew it was going to happen, but she pushed forward anyway to have the kid and knew that she would die or something. Or she just was specifically planning on only releasing this once she died, whenever that might be. Because the kid looked kind of older. Maybe that maybe maybe Edith just died at that point. Not sure. Well, this was a trip. Uh, I think... Well, it was, well, there was obviously less mechanics in it, because it was mostly walking around and just kind of experiencing its narrative. It's one of the best forms of this kind of game I think I've seen so far, this first-person interactive storytelling sort of movie game thing. Uh, the last one it did w was more mechanics-driven, Unfinished Swan. It was almost like a puzzle game, but I don't know if I'd actually necessarily say it was a puzzle game as much as you just always had to do something to continue. Because I don't know if it always really felt... Uh, I guess I'll probably be revisiting it soon, so I'll be able to re renew my memories, but it, I, I don't really remember it being much of a thing that actually had puzzles as much as just stuff you would kind of do as you progressed forward. That was a little more video gamey. This and it had a more abstract story, where it was hard entire. It was a little hard to tell exactly what story it was trying to tell. Whereas this one is very specific. Although both of them are, deal with the idea of loss and seemingly something like a song getting stopped midway through playing. Basically, the idea of something is in progress and then it just ends. And so they both seem to be about dealing with death on some level. Beautiful game, really cool concepts, really cool vignettes, really great little concepts and everything, but... Yeah. Alright, yep. Yeah. I don't even know what to say anymore. <laughs> I think this, this, I think this one will be memorable for a lot of people. And I'm interested in seeing where they go next, because they've done two interesting projects in a row now, and unlike many indie developers that, uh, that start and make waves with their first project, I think that this game actually is better than their previous one. A lot of their sophomore efforts of these young developers are often a little more unfocused, or they don't quite capture what made everyone pay attention to the first one and other things go wrong, but I think they actually may have done better here than they did last time. Thanks for watching like always, guys. I'll see you next time.